Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. So something I never covered was actually how to play Nintendo games or Famicom disc system games on the NES and SNES Classic. I know with the NES Classic, the emulator's built in. I never thought when I did my original How to Hack Your System video, you know, that RetroArch had the Nintendo cores already installed and those were removed in a later release. So now we have people with, you know, SNES Classics that don't know how to play Nintendo games. I get questions all the time. How do I play Nintendo games? What are the best cores? So that's what I'm going to go over with today. We're going to go over the NES cores. We're going to go over how to play Famicom Disk System games. So the first step as always is to hack your system. In my description, I have a tutorial video on how to do that. So if you're using an NES Classic, the native emulator is called Catchy Catchy, and that will run most NES games just fine. That'll actually run Famicom Disk System games really well too. But if you're on the SNES Classic, you have to do a little bit more work. The cores we're looking for are FCU MM and NES Topia. There's not much difference between the two. You can pick either one you want. When testing Famicom Disk System games though, the FCEU MM core will not play them. You have to use Nestopia, or if you're on, like I said, the NES Classic, you can use the native emulator on that. So to install these cores, you open up your version of HackGCE, go to the Modules tab, Go to the Mod Store. Go to the RetroArch tab. You're going to install the newest version of RetroArch Neo. Just hit the button right here that says Download Module. Then you're going to go to the RetroArch Cores tab and down to the NES emulators. So we have four here. Nestopia, FCEU MM, Meeson, and Quickness. Um, Meeson and Quickness, I don't recommend using. I don't hear good things about them. So stick with Nestopia or FCEU MM. Um, once again, just pick whichever one you're going to use, hit the button right here that says download module, and then we can close the mod store. Go back to your modules tab, install extra modules. You're going to put a check mark next to RetroArch Neo if you haven't installed that already, and then you're going to find the NES core, either FCEU MM or NES Topia. And you can use both of these if you like, as long as you make sure that you designate what core the game is going to use. So anyway, put a check next to your core, put a check next to RetroArch, hit this OK button right here, and then a bar is going to appear on your screen. Once that bar fills in all the way, it means these cores are installed to your system and they're ready to be used. Adding the games work just like anything else. Just hit the Add More Games button down here in the corner and then navigate to whatever folder you have your ROMs in. We're going to be using Zelda 2, the Japanese version, which is a Famicom Disk System game. So you highlight the game, hit Open, and it'll be added to Hatching. And you'll see here it has its own designation, Family Computer Disk System, with its own icon. So we're going to get some box art for it real quick. So like I said, this will run with Nestopia or with the native emulator on the NES Classic. So right here, if you're running it from the native emulator, you'll see slash bin slash clover dash catchy catchy dash WR. This is fine. This will run the game. If you want to run it from Nestopia, all you do is take this out and type in Nestopia. An alternative way to change the command line is to right click the game and go down to select emulation core. You're going to highlight the game on the next screen, select family computer disk system, and you'll see here there's a list of cores. We're going to use catchy catchy for this. I want to use the native core on the NES Classic. Hit the apply button right here and then close it out. And you'll see here that the command line has been changed back. So the last step is to hit this synchronize button down here to move the game from your PC to your console or the export games button if you're using a USB flash drive. So the reason I'm going over Famicom Disk System games is because the type of game they are, they don't come on cartridges, they come on you know floppy disks that you have to flip the side. Well, a lot of people didn't understand that you had to flip the side, they didn't know what buttons to push. So we're gonna head over to our NES Classic. I'm gonna show you how that works. All right, so here we are on the NES Classic. I really miss this menu music. I haven't been using my NES Classic a lot lately. So here's our game, but I want to run uh, Zelda 2 with NES Topia first. Is it NES Topia or Nestopia? I don't know. Well, that's what I'm going to use first. So let me load that up real quick. All right, so I've navigated to where the ROM's at and I have my choice of NES emulators. We're going to select Nestopia. See here, it's already a little different. That's not normal for a Nintendo game. So that's just like the uh, the uh, Famicom Disk System BIOS. Oh, which reminds me, you need the BIOS file for this. I think it's disksys.zip. I'll put it somewhere up here, you know, and then you just install that using the BIOS installer. And you know what, I'll leave the video in the description on how to install BIOS files as well. Um, but you do need that for Disk System games. 
I almost forgot that. So here's uh, Zelda 2 on the disc system. I'm going to push start. Uh, put in my name, I guess, real quick. Don't know why everything's in English. That's something different with Japanese games. Sometimes everything's in English. Oh, we have to wait because this is a disc system game. There's waiting. There we go. So now we're going to start. Oh, no. Now we have to change to side B. Well, with using an emulator, there is no size. There's no flipping. So what you need to do if you're using Nestopia, um, you have to hit the L button if you're using a Super Nintendo controller. As far as I know, nothing else will switch that. So that's why, you know, if you're on a SNES Classic, use NESTopia or Nestopia. Hit L to change the disc. If you're on the NES Classic, we'll go over that in a little bit. So I'm going to hit L. And now we wait. The wait time is kind of different considering, you know, we don't wait on cartridge games. Well, you have to on this. And then our game starts up. Um, yeah, so there's a little bit of differences between this one and the NES version. And we've already seen some already. The disk system BIOS coming in, switching disks. So now I'm going to go back to my NES Classic menu. I'm going to run this using the native emulator. So let's open that up. We get the BIOS again. It's saying to set the disk card. So if we don't hit anything using Catchy Catchy, it doesn't go past the screen. If you hit B, then it sets the card. And then just like Nestopia, you know, you get the introduction and then the game should start. There we go. We're going to hit start. I've already created a save file, so we're going to hit start again. Change side B. I didn't touch anything. It went right into the game. But you do have to change the disc in that intro part. And I don't know if it's just me, but this sounds a little quieter than when using Nestopia. So maybe it's just me. I don't know. Anyway, but there's some differences in the disc system version. If you're very familiar with Zelda 2, uh, that water there, that's different. We didn't have that in the NES version. Normally the water is standstill. But here we have some animation. Also, the music is different. There's different channels using the Famicom Disk System version. Um, here's the difference. Those monsters don't look like anything that we know. They're uh, not, they look like balloons. There we go. It's a party. Let's all celebrate. So that's very different. And there's different colors too. You notice there was white and blue. I've also seen red when I was kind of testing this. So yeah, you hit one of the balloons. Well, or not. When you see that the intro uh, sound effect entering a battle and the battle music in the background is different than what we're used to. There's still the same enemies. Shield sound makes the same noise. Our shield makes the same noise. Let me let me show you something. So when you hit an enemy shield or you hit like a block like this, this is the sound it makes. That sounds a lot louder than everything else too. I don't know if that's... You know, the normal sound in the background music just isn't very loud using Catchy Catchy, but, you know, it's there. You know, when you get hit, um, sounds different. All that weird stuff. And there's other differences, like the experience system is different, um, but a more noticeable one is this one. No picture of Ganon, you got a different sound effect. So there you go, just a quick rundown of Nintendo and Famicom Disk System games. Like I said, I wouldn't have done a video like this if I didn't get a lot of comments and a lot of questions asking what core is preferred and how to run, you know, the Disk System games. You know, if you're on the SNES Classic, now you have an understanding of how to run Nintendo games on that system. So I hope this was useful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.